Hello there everyone and welcome to Game Points episode 171, your weekly little get together where we talk about recent gaming news. I am as always your host Stephen Brand and joining me today is... I'm David. Tonight, David, we have some next-gen console news. Uh, the PS5 had some stuff apparently get revealed, not even leaks, this is official. We have Xbox One going all digital, we have a bunch of Batman Rocksteady rumors kicking around, uh, actually Batman might be a bit of a misnomer as we see later on, and... We're going to talk about, yet again, Fortnite and the Avengers joining forces. <laughs> Yay! Of course, if you're watching us live here at Twitch TV slash GamePoints, you too can be part of the conversation. Feel free to join in whatever topics we happen to be talking about at the time, but if you can't join us live, feel free to comment down below on the YouTube page later as well. David. Yes, sir. This has been a very exciting week for pop culture, hasn't it? I mean, we've got Game of Thrones back. We have Avengers Endgame coming out. We have console news for the next generation up and running. Yeah, there's there's a new Hellboy movie. I don't know. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I forget. Okay. I forgot the Hellboy movie is coming out, to be fair. No, uh, that I, movie is already out. I already watched it. Oh, shit. It, is it any good? <laughs> um, I think it is a movie that will do very well a few years from now. Okay, so you're like, saying it's a tad ahead of its time, or like hit like cult no, no, status? No. I think it's going to be more of a cult movie. Like, it's not designed to fill seats. Like, if you're a fan of Hellboy, probably go see it because one of the guys that worked on the Hellboy comics was there every step of the way building this thing. A bunch of people aren't going to see it specifically because it doesn't have Ron Perlman in it, which I feel is a little bit of a loss because it's a little campy, a little ridiculous. The pacing's odd at some points, but I thought it was a pretty enjoyable like popcorn comic book movie. That's Far less serious than a lot of the comic book stuff we've been watching recently. Okay. Although Shazam's pretty lighthearted. This this is just more ridiculous, I guess. Fair enough. So is it is it like is it bad? You say that in such a way that makes me think it's bad. I don't know. Is the fifth element bad? Okay. I see where you're getting at now. Anyways. That, that's what I mean. It's more <laughs> Like, I feel like it's not going to be commercially successful, but people will like this movie. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Anyways, we're not here to talk about Hellboy. We're here to talk about video games. And That's true. And he hasn't had a video game in a minute. No, it's been a while. <laughs> and, of course, one of the bigger stories that's somewhat breaking today, as well as what's happening yesterday, is this whole idea of whatever the hell Rocksteady has been working on for the past couple years since Arkham Knight came out. Now, David, have you heard any of these rumors getting kicked about? Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong. I will. Did we or did we not report on this exact rumor like a year ago? And it was just flat out denied by all parties. I think the rumor you're that thinking of Rock was a Justice League rumor. Coming from Rocksteady? Yeah. I thought specifically that I had read this rumor about Rocksteady that they were working on a project in this universe. Well, I mean, I shouldn't say universe, but with this specific property a long fucking time ago. I swear I did. But I could just be tripping. Who knows? It could have been a different developer. Fair enough. Either way, these rumors that I'm about to break down come from Reset Era, Game Rant, Segment Next, and a whole bunch of other sources. Uh, and I say sources loosely in quotes because it's all anonymous and tips and all that stuff. But they have been prevalent enough over the past few days that I feel like we should address them. First part here is a recent leak may point to Rocksteady's next big game focusing on none other than the Suicide Squad. Bum, bum. According to the leak, the announcement of the next Rocksteady game will arrive, will arrive on June 4th, which is a week before E3 2019. The footage will show Gotham as a playable area, which will be one of many with Star City coming in a later separate reveal. So, if this leak is true, and I'll touch on that here in a second... But let's say that this leak is true. That means it's not just going to be Gotham as a playable map, but other cities in the DC universe as well. I'm into it. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> fair enough. So to address what you are talking about leaks earlier, I know that Rocksteady has straight up denied working on a Justice League game. This would not technically be a Justice League game. There would be going to a Suicide Squad uh, and, well, whatever this other leak might be. From one of the other parts here, another leak that happened today was that apparently the possibly biggest leak has revealed more than Rocksteady wanted us to know at this point. According to leaked images, the next Rocksteady Studios game will be called 
outlaws the famous DC comic Vigilante Group. So they're not Suicide Squad, which means if they did deny Suicide Squad before, technically not Suicide Squad, but that the outlaws, they're kind of like uh, Punisher Light. Think like the Thunderbolts almost, yeah. if yeah, you want to yeah. go Marvel. Outlaws is led by Jason Todd. Jason Todd does some shit. Yeah, Jason Todd also featured prominently in Arkham Knight. Spoilers so for sense. a game that's three years old. I feel like it's older than that. That came, in, that came, in, came in a million years <laughs> it, ago. It could have. However, this is where the problem comes up. These two rumors, if true, contradict each other. Because the first yeah. rumor that I just I, I just said comes the the reveal will be on June fourth. It came on this giant uh, fact sheet, almost the same format and style that the Mortal Kombat Eleven leak used, and that turned mm-hmm. out to be true. So it kind of gives a little bit of validity to it. This leak that happened today says we're going to hear about this game by the end of this week. We'll find out. And that's where the contradiction happens. Suicide Squad, the the Suicide Squad Outlaws uh, difference, that could be chalked up to someone who doesn't know video games or comics going, yeah, I heard it's going to be Suicide Squad when someone could have said it's going to be like the Suicide Squad. Yeah, it could be. Do you see? Because they kind of are. Yeah. If I mean, I barely know who the outlaws are, and I read, I don't read comics, but I know comics. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you get what I? Would you get what I say? I'm not like your average plebe who only just watched the movies. Yeah, yeah, I get it. So you, you clicked a Wikipedia article once or twice. Yeah, I, 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 I've read through a couple summaries. I know what the premise yeah, yeah. behind Hush is, kind of. I've, I've seen Cliff Notes. Yeah. So that these are the rumors going around now. They were kind of given some more life recently, and that one guy actually straight up asked Jason Schreier, the man who leaks everything and ruins everything for everyone, it seems, <laughs> came up, and uh, someone asked him about these rumors, and he responded saying, well, I don't want to spoil it for you. So everyone's kind of went, oh my god, it's true, blah, 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 blah. Not necessarily. Take yeah. it with a grain of salt, because he has, I, I want to say he's actually officially said he knows exactly what they're working on and has for like a year and a half. And hasn't said anything, because yeah. he doesn't have to. No. So that that's something to consider. Just because Jason Schreier right now is being coy does not mean that this reveal is true. True. That makes so sense. So I, I want everyone kind of running away with things to take this with a grain of salt. But I feel like this is... That there's a lot of truth here. Because normally... When something like this leaks, even major sites like IGN, Kotaku, Polygon, etc. would run some kind of story on it saying, hey, there are rumors of. Mm-hmm. Because it gets a lot of clicks. Anything about the Rocksteady game gets clicks. Right now, though, all the major sites are just dead fucking quiet on it. Probably because they're all under embargo. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly the uh, point I'm trying to make here. Which just lead more towards their being revealed at the end of the week. Yes, as opposed to something happening. Because you don't, you don't, you don't make embargo plans for June. Shit gets leaked. You make embargo plans like a couple weeks ahead, maybe a week ahead, mm-hmm. at, at most a month, but never, never like three or four months out. Because shit will get leaked by then. Yeah. For so sure. I would not be. I am tentatively saying that this rumor is true. But don't be surprised if it turns out to be false or if only half of it was legit or if things get moved around because stuff does happen. Well, a lot See, of people... None, th- of that's, none of that's the important part. Okay. If it is true, if it is a rumor, blah, blah, blah. How do you feel about the possibility of Rocksteady's next game being like a group team-up adventure as opposed to like a single player? Well, no bueno. Single player? Not into it. That That is what some of the rumors lead to, specifically the leaked... Uh, I, I didn't even mean it that sheet. way. It just kind of... My brain revealed that thought as i was talking oh oh i meant like you pick a squad of characters or whatever and you go through and you're like hot swapping characters or whatever playing through it with a team you know yeah if if you actually read the uh cell the the little notes that leaked that might have leaked last week they make mention of shit like multiplayer elements and a raid coming later yeah, see... Uh, that bothers me. I don't like that at all. Is, what if this Rocksteady service game set loosely in the formula built by the Arkham games, but featuring all the outlaws, also a shit ton of guest characters that other people can play as? Not into it. Ooh. I want my Rocksteady games to be a self-contained single-player experience that tells a ni- ni- uh, nice and tight narrative from beginning to end, and you can't have that by definition if you're a games-as-a-service. I mean, I love... You want to know what I want? Go ahead. 
I want a Rocksteady game that fucking works on release. So whatever the hell you guys are working on, please bother to actually finish the fucking thing before you send it out. That would you're, be you're preaching to the choir here, and unfortunately, WB does not care. They are not part of our congression, congregation, whatever that religious word is. Dude, I still have never played Arkham Knight. It came free That's a with shame. my graphics card, and I never played it. I was one of the few who actually had Arkham Knight work relatively bug-free on the PC, and I loved it. Well, hey, I, I I liked Arkham City better, but Arkham Knight was still damn good. Coco for Tacos, thank you for showing up, by the way. So, yeah. Uh, either way, we'll see. These two dates are conflicting with each other. The, re the reveal in the first leak was June 4th. The reveal today is April 26th. People say they have images, but images can be faked. In fact, the reveal that was today has like a picture of the outlaw, uh, the, the name outlaws on there. But someone quickly pointed out that the clock tower in the background looked a lot like a just touched up Photoshop version of Big Ben. <laughs> That's funny. So, but there is a clock tower like that, and that it, it you can't. My gut leans a little bit toward this could be legit, just because it's solely on the fact that the big outlets aren't talking about it. But the big outlets could also just know this is bullshit and choosing not to report on it. Mm -hmm. So we'll definitely see by the end of this week. If you have any thoughts on what this could be, please let us know down in the comments below. Uh, Pre-April 26th, by the way, once that date happens, we'll know if this is true or not. So feel free to comment on the appropriate area regardless if you're watching here at or twitch just, or youtube or just uh, wait a week and we'll talk about it then <laughs> yeah i mean if, if this rumor is true and it does happen this week guess what we're talking about next week mm, there you go david why don't you go ahead and lead us off on the next story here so this is this is kind of a fun one this story is from wired um but i think technically you can credit it to being from mark cerny who is the lead architect and producer of the ps4 and vita video game mm -hmm. consoles from from sony computer entertainment America? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got some console rumors. And by rumors, I mean actual details, fuzzy details, about the architecture of the upcoming PlayStation yes, 5. This Although at no is... point in this article is it named that. Correct. The next PlayStation console. This shit is confirmed console. by the guy literally building the console in an exclusive interview with Wired. So you can kind of take yep. this one to the bank. Also, something that we've been saying for a minute, it will not be landing in stores anytime in 2019. That makes a shit ton of sense uh, that it doesn't come out this year, which is why they've been so quiet about announcements and everything else. Uh, hardware will be starting with an AMD chip at the heart of the device. The CPU is based on the third generation of AMD's Ryzen line. Uh, those third gen Ryzen's actually, I think, are supposed to be coming out July of this year, so they're not even in PC hands yet. Uh, eight cores of the company's new uh, Zen M, Z2 architecture, microarchitecture, whatever. And the GPU is a custom variant of Radeon's Navi family, which supports ray tracing, because once again, AMD is the real winner of the console wars. It certainly <laughs> seems that way. I mean, NVIDIA yeah. has like a stranglehold on PCs, it seems. Well, not stranglehold, but NVIDIA seems to be the big thing on PCs, but when it comes to consoles, it's all AMD all the time. Yep, they're building the chips and they're building the graphics card. Uh, and the big thing really is that it's supporting ray tracing. The AMD chip is also going to have a custom unit for 3D audio, which is super rad to me. Uh, I'm kind of an audio nerd, and I one of the things that I liked about the upgraded Xbox One when it came out is its audio output abilities, something that Sony has not been able to match, and if this can surpass it, hey, I'm all for it. The biggest thing I'm waiting for is, does it come with an HD Blu-ray drive? Because they didn't say that. I don't think so, uh, but we'll see. My gut tells me no. Actually, my Fucking... gut straight up tells me no. Because everyone... Here's the thing. Why not? And this is going to kind of lead into a conversation you're probably going to have later. Physical media is going away. So why would Sony invest on giving you a HD Blu-ray drive when it's something that so few people are actually going to be using? And as time goes on, less and less and less people are going to be using. Because putting a DVD drive into the PS2 won that console war. They don't have to worry about that this time around. I'm just saying, if Xbox is already leaning into digital only, which we'll talk about a little later, Sony could double down on physical media and say, hey, guess what? We actually have the set-top box that can take all that shit you've been buying this whole time. Okay, so take that and idea. Sony, as a hardware manufacturer, does finally make an HD Blu-ray drive, which they didn't have at the time of the PS4 Plus or Pro, which is why it wasn't released, because they didn't want to outsource it to another vendor and lose money. Now they have that part. And it's one of the best damn HD drives you can buy. So 
I just feel like they should hand that over because Sony, in addition to making shit ton of video games, also makes movies. Why wouldn't they want to sell you all that shit? Okay, first, hey, it's respect. Thanks for showing up, Jack. Second, remember how, or at least one of my, I don't know if you kind of share my opinion on this, remember how one of the, uh, one of the ongoing themes seems to be Sony's hubris, how they feel like Sony if, right before PlayStation 3 came out? Mm-hmm. Factor that into your equations and then tell me if you still think they're going to put in a Blu-ray HD drive into this thing. Oh, I see. I don't know for sure that they're going to. I, I'm saying that they would be stupid not to. <laughs> okay. I don't think they are, and I think they're going to justify it by people shifting to an all digital landscape. In fact, I I, I know people keep saying the all, the digitalist console, the digital console is coming, and it kind of is. But I don't think we're always going to have a skew with physical media in there. I just don't think Sony is going to see a a. I think they're going to look at their cost analysis and they're going to go, nah, this is too much. Don't worry about it. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Sony was also asked about virtual reality and said, quote, I won't go into the details of our VR strategy today. Beyond saying that VR is very important to us and the current PSVR headset is compatible with the new console. Awesome. So I, that's great because all those PSVR adopters are not screwed when the next console comes yes, out. Yes, I'm super excited fan- for that. Flipping fantastic. So let's see. Just a couple comments from chat. Uh, Cook Fataco says he thinks it's going to be for the low price of $800. Uh, that's Philip CDI territory at that point. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, people want a bigger HDD. Uh, that also, I, I, I think one terabyte is going to be the standard at this point now, period. You're going to have one terabyte, and that's just what it's going to come with, if not more. But I think one terabyte minimum is going to be your standard. Let's see. Uh, well, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, Coco also says, in my opinion, a slim version of the PS5 will be disk driveless. I think that there will be a SKU that it does not have a drive in there. Uh, but we'll talk about more of this on the next topic. But yep. I, I think you're on the right path of thinking there. But I also do believe that they will have for sure have a SKU that is physical media because we're not there yet in America. So one of the other big things from the article that Cerny talks about that is probably the most important, I think, is he, while he was talking to developers on what they wanted from the next gen, one of the most common things he heard back from them is, hey, can we get an SSD? Because game size has ballooned, right? Yeah. Red, Red Dead Redemption 2 is 100 gigs. And that shit takes forever to load, constantly, anything you're doing. And uh, during his little demonstration, Cerny pointed, actually pulled up a PS4 Pro playing Spider-Man and would do fast traveling and it would take 15 seconds to jump from one side of the map to the other. He then pulled up a completely like unstylized dev kit, just a gray box where you can't see any features whatsoever that's running a low speed version of like basically the early version of a PS5 in it. And he was able to load the same fast travel from Spider-Man in 0.8 seconds because they're running it with an SSD. That... I like the description of this dev kit, by the way. It's just a gray box. They des- deliberately designed it so the people that you're interviewing don't get to see what's in there. <laughs> yep. Uh, the big thing, though, is it's it's also supposed to like support 8K graphics and all this other nonsense. SSDs, while they're getting rapidly cheaper, are still pretty fucking expensive, especially yeah. if we're going all the way up to a terabyte. And if you're going to install games on it, you're going to need a lot of space. Are they going to have like a dual boot? Are they going to put it on a hybrid SSD? Are they going to do some bullshit like that? Who knows? But that's going to drive the price up. If they follow my advice and take that HD Blu-ray drive, that's going to drive the price up. If they're putting in 3D audio and all this other shit, that's going to drive the price up. And then you get into scary price territory because, as we've seen time and time again with the console wars, people can just price themselves the fuck out of the market. That's what happened to PlayStation pay, 3. People won't pay $700 for a console. They just won't. No. Uh, so, like you were saying, it will support 8K. Cerny straight up said this will not straight up said this will not be all digital. So there will be a physical media skew. All of this combined. And I have the question I pose to you and to our viewers, be they either live or later. How much do you think this console is going to cost? And how much would you be willing to pay for this console? I think if they manage it, I don't think this is likely, but the cheapest I could see it ever coming out would be like four ninety nine. You don't think that's likely? I I think that's the price they should be shooting for. 
What do you think they're going to release of that? Six hundred bucks. <laughs> okay. I think four ninety nine is what they're going to release of that, and I think that Sony knows. They, they know have to hit it. they cannot release a console at five ninety nine again because that's fucking PlayStation three territory, and we saw yep. what happened when that came, when that thing came out. Yep. Sony is, has that hubris going on. I feel it. I can sense it in everything that they've been releasing. But they're not that fucking arrogant to think they can get away with charging five ninety nine for another console again. We'll I see. I think Although, they have learned their lesson. We are jumping over. I think the most important part of this entire interview. Uh, because the upcoming PlayStation, I'll just call it that, is based in part on the PS4's architecture, it will also be backward compatible with games for that console. Yes, from what I understand, that, that is, is the true. biggest damn news, and that's amazing. Because Which, go ahead. why don't I need a PS4? I'll throw that thing in the garbage and just get a PS5 and just play all my games on it. All right, what, and that also lines up with their idea that the launch window seems that. They, Cerny didn't come out and say this, but they asked some questions about things like Death Stranding, where it's going to be a PlayStation 5 title, and their PR team kind of started getting a little twitchy when Cerny just kind of grinned. So it mm. sounds like they're doing that thing where they're going to be releasing two versions of the game, the PlayStation 4 yep. version of the game and the PlayStation 5 version of the game. Makes and you, you don't really do that mixed library thing if you're not preparing for your stuff to be able to transfer over. Even when PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 and PlayStation, PlayStation 4 stuff happened... Uh, actually, PlayStation Three. Could you play PlayStation Three disc games on early PlayStation Fours? I don't think you could have actually. No. No. Okay, that kills that entire idea I was about to have. So never PS4 mind. PS Four is not backwards compatible in any way, and never was. PS Three. That's right. Was they tried fully doing backwards on... compatible with everything all the way to PS One. Up until the like launch the window. yeah, up until like the, after the, a year and a half, the console was out and they got tell, rid of that. Tell the redesign and they put only two USBs on the front instead of four. That's yeah, chat's confirming that. So that actually kills the idea I was going with that. So never mind. Let's back off of that. That now if this PS5 comes out on. and can play every single fucking PlayStation game ever made. That I, is a rumor I heard that you'll be able to. So the the rumor that I heard. And keep in mind what we, with rumors. A yeah, lot of them just don't have to be true. This could this could have come from someone as stupid as we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that you could stick a PlayStation 1 disc in this fucker and it will play it. That would be game-changing to me. That would be so amazing. I don't think that's going to happen. I highly doubt that's going to happen. But if it does, I would pay $4.99 gladly. Right? Anyways, I mean, if, I can re- if I can replace all my Sony consoles with one box, you can you can charge me that extra hundred bucks, guys. Come bring it on. <laughs> yeah, it, it it cannot be higher than four ninety nine ninety nine. It absolutely can. it'll come with a <laughs> one terabyte hard drive, four ninety nine ninety nine, and like a controller, <laughs> but but nothing else. But God, I don't even think they can put like a bundle SKU for higher than four ninety nine. Because you could say, here's our console for $4.99, but if you want with all this extra shit, it's going to be $5.99. People won't focus on the $4.99. They'll just hear $5.99, and they'll go, fucking Sony, it's PlayStation 3 again. <laughs> Bridge Racer, get up, giant enemy crab, and that that's all that will be over and over again. So they cannot, from a marketing standpoint, release this thing for more than $4.99, even in a bundled form, because they want to stay away from the memes. And as we know, memes are far more dangerous than people realize. <laughs> well, there you go. And that, that about covers it. Um, they yeah. went into no software specifications at all, anything like that. They just talked about base hardware. And obviously, this was released, and then the internet rumor mill went wild. So some of this stuff is speculation. But the actual, hey, it's going to work with the PSVR, or, hey, it's going to have these two AMD chips in it, that's all true. Yeah, that, that came from sure. the man who's literally designing the system. So, unless it gets something horrible happens and it gets cut, and I don't think it will. That's also, introspect if PS5 launches with a Ridge Racer VR game, I will be lining up for that shit. Bring back Ridge Racer. I'm down. <laughs> Let us know what you guys would love to see in the next PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5, whatever the fuck they're going to call it, down below as we move on to our next topic. Not to be shown up by the PlayStation 5 news last week, Xbox announced their own thing. No, uh, it wasn't. Dude, let's talk about the continued confusing debate that is Xbox One SKUs. Yes. So, this is not news on the new Xbox next generation console. It's not that. 
But this what is, this is... This is some very sad Xbox One news. I don't know if it's sad, but I, I, it, I want to... It is specifically sad, and I will tell you why after okay. we start talking. So, Xbox One S All Digital Edition has been announced. This is an Xbox One S without a hard drive. Or a disk, uh, without a disk drive. Not without a hard drive. <laughs> Here's your all digital console without a hard drive. It comes with a one terabyte hard drive in there. It's going to have Minecraft, Sea of Thieves, and Forza Horizon, th- or Forza Horizon 3 pre-installed. It comes out May 7th, so right around the corner. And they're launching it for $249.99. Why is this sad? Because it's the Xbox One S, all digital. Yes. S A D. Xbox One SAD is how every single oh, publication you're on right. the internet will refer to this console for all fucking time. Are you guys serious? You have the Xbox One S, the what Xbox One X, which are already confusing enough to say out loud because fucking. The, those those letters sound kind of similar all the you time. That and, now you straight up, and now you straight up have an Xbox One, which again is the stupidest fucking name for a console ever made. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Sad edition. Oh, <laughs> and it's two hundred fifty dollars. Why would you spend that when you can't even put like this thing has no purpose? That's my problem with it. I, I like the idea of an all digital console, right? But the price is way too high. Two hundred forty nine ninety nine seems ridiculous. This should be a two hundred dollar console. I don't want an all-digital console. No, I, I, I do. Uh, my console is what I plug into my television so I can watch Blu-rays. I would not buy an all-digital console, but I want to see all-digital consoles start coming out because that is the future. That is what we're heading toward. Love it or not, the all-digital future is coming. It Regardless can, it, if we it agree can up or all not. It all at once, but it's, it's not ready. You guys aren't ready. <laughs> not for 250 bucks. Yeah, 250 bucks is insane, though, especially with the games you're getting. Minecraft, Sea of Thieves, and Forza Rides of the... Okay. Yeah, how, about, how about a year of Game Pass for free? That's what I was just going to say. How about how about you fix the name? Xbox One All Digital. Just get rid of the S. You don't fucking need it. 250 bucks Comes with a year of Game Pass. Comes with Xbox Live Gold. Now, introspect. He's saying that... Or she actually... I don't know who, who introspect is. I think about it. Uh, introspect <laughs> says that they can get a regular S for cheaper in most places. And they didn't even slimline it. Let me ask you there, Introspect. Is that cheaper brand new, or is it cheaper used? Uh, that That's the question. But, but either way, because I could I could swear that the MSRP of the actual Xbox One S is still $299. But that's MSRP. There could be a clear-out store selling it for cheaper than that. Uh, and yes, technically you can get it for free if you're fast enough. I, I do understand where you're going from there. Either way, $249 is just too much. I think we're both on agreement on that, right? Stupid how, price for a stupid box. How would you feel if it was two hundred? I still wouldn't want it, but it would make slightly more sense. Okay. I just, I get the idea of the digital console. It comes with a terabyte hard drive. That's great. Make it make it small. It doesn't need to be that fucking big. Make it smaller. Make two hundred bucks, and give some incentive to buy it. I just, I don't know. <laughs> It it feel it feels like it's missing something, right? If you're gonna launch it at two fifty, it should be bundled with more than a couple of games. It, it feels like it just needs that little bit of an edge to push it over. But anyways, yeah. let us know what you guys think about the Xbox One Sad down below. Sad or Saw Day? I'm gonna go with Sad because it makes me depressed. <laughs> Excuse me, I had a cough there. <laughs> Either way, we didn't we didn't notice. No, no. Well, you, no one did because I muted it. You did, though. Sure. Moving on from the console talk, of which I'm sure will dominate between now and next year. There's always going to be rumors of what whatever's going to be in the new boxes. Moving on from that, let's get back into the game side of things. Have you heard about this Fortnite Avengers crossover that's happening? Yeah, didn't that happen like a year ago? For the most part, yes. This is via IGN. <laughs> Epic Games is teasing yet another Fortnite Avengers crossover scheduled to drop just before Endgame is released later this week. This news was revealed for the official Fortnite Twitter account with the caption, Whatever it takes for 2519. 
Though it is unclear exactly what the Avengers content is, the tweet is accompanied by an image of the character holding Captain America's classic vibranium shield. And yes, this would not be the first time Fortnite and the Avengers got together. If you recall, sometime right before Infinity War came out, you could get like the Infinity Gauntlet and just beat the holy hell out of people. You you you, you could just snap. Is that what it was? It snapped and you win the I I I Fortnite is a game that I respect for what it is, but I cannot play. I can either play a battle royal game or I can play a builder game, but I can't do both. My brain won't handle it. Oh, it wasn't even that. I played that game for a minute and I just didn't enjoy the shooting mechanics. It was like too cartoony for me. Fair enough. It didn't feel clean like Team Fortress did. I don't know. Uh, what was his power? Did you did you play it when? Thanos was running around? Of course not. I've read articles on the internet. <laughs> it's a, played, that's what we do. I played, I played that game like right as it was on the cusp of being popular. Who's got time then, to actually play video games? And then decided, eh, this one's not for me. And then missed that entire party bus to the sky. So um, what, but I'm what pretty was sure you could actually snap power. and just kip and just kill half the people. Okay. Cool idea. Definitely them. So yes, there is another crossover coming up between Fortnite Avengers. We'll see it this week. I know that like the competitive side of Fortnite keeps bitching about all these new events because by the time they finally get the meta down, they change it again over and over and over again. And shit's not always balanced. We have to look no farther than when they did their Infinity Blade event and some good got the Infinity Blade and it was just broken all the hell. So they actually had to take it out and end it before the event was over. So we'll see what happens here. If I had to venture a guess, there'll probably be various weapons everywhere that are themed to every character. So you'll find like Cap Shield, Iron Man's like Blazer Beam, uh, Hawkeye's Bow and Arrow or something like that, Thor's Hammer. We'll see. David? I was just trying to check to see if I could figure out what the hell that gauntlet did, but then I decided it was just too much work and I don't care enough. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Like, ah, just in case someone yells at me later, I should probably correct this, but I'm not going to, so Fair if enough. I'm wrong. Let's move on to the next topic here. And I want to thank Salty Frank, member of our community here at Game Points, for bringing these articles to my attention. And if you, too, want to be part of the community and potentially have your tips read on the air, please feel free to join our Discord server information down below. These articles are via The Guardian and TechSpot. Last week, Notre Dame Cathedral caught on fire. Yes, it did. Bad bad thing. Burnt a lot of it to the ground. Destroyed a lot of centuries-old uh, structures. It, it, is a, it is a bad thing. I hate seeing history get destroyed. But a series known for being in a historical setting since Assassin's Creed, and since Assassin's Creed... Unit was it Unity? Is that the French Revolution yep. one? Has a bunch yep. of the Notre scenes in Notre Dame. That game has a special connection to that historical landmark. As such, the Assassin's Creed creators pledge five hundred thousand euros to the rebuilding of Notre Dame. That's classy, guys. Awesome. From the articles. Ubisoft will be donating half a million euros to help with restoration efforts and is also making Assassin's Creed Unity available free on PC next week. Quote, giving everyone the chance to experience the majesty and beauty of Notre Dame the best way we know how, end quote, said a studio spokesperson. The iconic building features prominently in the game, a centerpiece of its virtual parish recreated painstakingly from old maps, photographs, and drawings throughout history, and it's supposed to be 90% of its actual real scale. So they more or less completely recreated Notre Dame from the ground up. Yep, that's pretty pretty rad. That, that, that's cool, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you, can, you can go play Unity and actually explore the way Notre Dame looks like in real life with some minor altercations. 10% of that is not actually... It, it's only 90% the scale. I always respected the hell of the Assassin's Creed games because of their commitment to history. Yeah, their, their attention to detail and all that good stuff. It's pretty and it's cool that they're making Unity for free. And people seem to be reacting very positively to this because on light of hearing this news, we saw review bombing happen on Assassin's Creed Unity in the reverse that it normally does. When yeah. announcing on Twitter their decision to make the game for free, the reaction was overwhelmingly positive, as you may expect. But surprisingly, gamers have employed the tactic of review bombing just to show how much they appreciate Ubisoft's jester. Before April 16th, Unity Steam page was averaging two to three reviews a day. But since the announcement, the game has over 600 extremely positive reviews. So people are review bombing Assassin's Creed Unity on Steam positively because they all think this is a cool idea. 
which just mm-hmm. kind of comes back to a point I've been making about review bombing and why I I kind of leaned on the side of having of it being a good thing because it is a way because it's a way the community can actually talk back to the developers exactly express in this case it's actually able to express support as opposed to the normal just anger and vehemence yes <laughs> which is which just I, I don't want let me amend my statement a little bit. I don't want to say that user scores are uh, necessarily a good thing to have around because I can see both sides. People want to get rid of them and keep them. But what this to me shows is that a lot of people don't look at review scores as an actual or a user score as an actual user score. They look at it as a feedback form. Yeah, seems that way. It's just it's an easier way to, to get into that game's community than joining the game's actual forum because who's on forums anymore right the funny thing though is the fact that assassin's Creed unity isn't even free on steam it's exclusive to Uplay. play yeah <laughs> like the free copy but hey steam is where reviews live and that's hey where that that drives that point home though people don't look at reviews uh, user re- user review scores as actual user review scores they look at it as has this developer done something shitty or not has this developer done something good or not mm-hmm. all that said if you're in support of getting rid of reviews during a negative review bombing, doing like what Steam did at Borderlands and pull, purging all the negative reviews, you must be in support of doing the same with the positive reviews here. Yeah, because uh, Steam hasn't pulled it down for being uh, off-topic reviews. That's exactly. True. It didn't happen. And they're probably not going to. And they should. It doesn't drag the game's names to the mud, and the game already has a mixed review score, and all of this has not changed the overall review of the game at all. It's still 600 positive reviews. If Steam wants to be consistent, they have to purge these reviews. Do you think Steam wants to be consistent? No, and that's a big problem. Do you think Steam Steam actually gives any amount of fucks, and that their other response wasn't just due to giving in to the constant complaints of its various, like community members and that's a problem yeah that leads to people not trusting things that leads to games moving to the epic store standard that leads to games moving to the epic store that leads to a lot of bullshit you have to be consistent on stuff and as much as i love hearing that gamers are actually doing something positive they're like hey this is fucking cool we want to show our support steam must purge these for being off topic they must Man, I know you're, like, making a point, but, God, I just don't give a shit, Steam, uh, on this one. Like, <laughs> they don't do it half the time for anything else. It it doesn't matter. Steam's going to ignore you. And even to your point, I don't think anyone cares enough to say that they need to enforce this. <laughs> like, it's a positive thing. Uplay did a cool thing. Just Or uh, fucking Ubisoft did a cool thing. Just let them have it. Whatever. All I want is consistency. How, That's how all I often, want. How often is a famous place going to burn down that Ubisoft could be like, hey, guys, we recreated that famous place once, and you guys can look at it. Here's our game for free. Ideally, goes, I, ideally, I would say fucking let it all out. <laughs> fucking let anyone comment on anything they want to. Let people say whatever they want, and it's up to each individual person to choose how to curate their own comment section. But Just if they are full, going... Full hell in reviews? <laughs> yes, I want fucking anarchy. <laughs> because that's the free speech absolutist to me. However... If you are going to apply a rule, you cannot apply it selectively. It must be for everything that that rule applies to, or else it's you not can, a rule, is it? It's you just yeah, playing you favorites. Can absolutely apply rules selectively. That's no. how the whole world works. No, that's fucking dumb. <laughs> While you are completely logical in your statement, unfortunately, 90% of people aren't, and so it just doesn't work, bro. I'm sorry. Nah, 90% of people fucking suck, too. Speaking of the people that suck, let's talk about the goddamn Capcom arcade. Fucking A, Capcom. You've done so much to make me love you, and then you plan to release this shitbox. <laughs> it's so bad looking. So last week... Oh if you all God. recall, we reported that this was a rumor that it was coming. Like, hey, this is all but confirmed. They're going to release a Capcom Arcade Classic Bundle. It'll probably have its own controller with it. God, it's so much worse and than we than we imagined it could have I been. I thought this controller would look nice. I don't have a picture of it, but this thing is fucking atrocious looking. Because it's okay. just the Capcom logo. It's the Capcom logo with two 
Sanma joysticks and six buttons per pad. Three on the CAP side, or the three three buttons and a joystick on the CAP side, and then more buttons and a joystick on the comm side. It looks fucking awful. It is more than three it buttons, be, by the way. It's like eight. It, it's it's got it. I'm oh, sorry. It's got the the six button like main fighting game controls, and then like a start select button on yeah. top for for each player, uh, or I guess L and R, whatever. Um, the problem is, you need to sit really close to a friend. It's going to be horrible for the second player ergonomically. That's just not a comfortable joypad to use in any way, shape, or form. Yes, this does finally have Alien vs. Predator Arcade Edition, but this thing is going to be two hundred fucking dollars and comes with sixteen old ass Capcom games. Well, yes, they are great. Could have been released in a thirty dollar package that I actually would have bought, and not this goddamn monstrosity. In addition, you can't just break the sticks apart and use them. They don't look good, and while it has decent parts in it, it's going to be horrible to use. Though it does look like it might have a USB port so you could plug it into a console and use it as a standalone stick. Fuck this thing. Let me see if I can find a picture of this goddamn thing that I can bring up so y'all can I'm see it here. So, I'm so upset about this. It does come with a pretty decent list of games. 1944, Alien vs. Predator Arcade Edition, Armored Warriors, Capcom Sports Club, Captain Commando, Cyber Boys, Darkstalkers, Echo Fighters, Final Fight, Ghouls and Ghost, Giga Wang, uh, Giga Warning. Warn- Mega Man The Power Battle, Pro Gear, Street, Street Fighter 2, The Hyper Fighting, Strider, and Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. It That's... is a dual joystick arcade game that mostly doesn't come with fighters. It comes with a bunch of arcade games. That's a real low-res photo, but it was the first thing I could find of what we're looking at here. It, it looks just atrocious, even, even if the photo wasn't like low-res like I have it right now. It is, it is god-awful also- looking. It is $200. $200. And once again, apologies for the low-res photo of that. That's just the and first well, thing yes, I can find real quick. $200 is a decent price for two full-size arcade joysticks. That's not what this is. Oh, if this thing looked better, I'd be far more into it. If it looked good and there was any kind of separation so you could take the two joysticks apart, even if they were touched together with a cable forever and you only got like six feet of space between the two, that would be better than this thing. Yeah, it, it, this it's is, no bueno. This is a $200 retro console that's only useful for little kids. No one will buy this. It's sending out to fail, and this is the only way we get to play Alien vs. Predator. Why is it that Capcom is forcing anyone that wants to play one of their best arcade games to pirate it? The so, best way to play their old game is to steal it, and that is fucking tragic. A couple your points. Only, your only other option is this $200 crap box. A couple points I want to make. It's two twenty nine ninety nine euros, two hundred uh, one ninety nine pounds. No North American pricing has been revealed yet, but I bet it's going to be two hundred bucks. But they haven't officially confirmed that yet. Two, I love the idea of this. I want Capcom to keep making things like this. It's just they the won't. design of the box itself is god fucking awful. It does not look fun to play. It does not look good to handle. It doesn't look. It just don't, it just looks bad. It just looks really bad. I think the game lineup is solid, and we just because they have this being bundled in with an arcade stick does not mean that they won't in the future put all of these on one thirty dollar disc either. I am willing with with all the goodwill Capcom has earned for me over the past couple years. I am willing to believe that they're going to put these on their own separate disc. I have to, because it's the only way I'd play them. And if they don't, no skin off my nose in this case. That sucks, but I'm not going to be upset if they don't do it. I think Capcom has once again proven themselves to be on the rise, the stars and ascendants, but they do have some fuck ups. Look no farther than the recent Marvel vs. Capcom game. Yep. It's just a bummer. I know some hardcore, like, fighting game kids. I know some hardcore Capcom kids. And yeah, I, I, I can think of one person specifically that would be drooling over this. I think you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, and he hates it. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I hate the way it's the main the main problem I have with it is the way it looks. I fucking hate the way it looks. I would rather it's, have just been it's a It's your goddamn logo, guys. Just make it look like an old arcade panel. Yeah, exactly. Just give me a box with a slightly slanted like a uh, uh 20 like, degree angle on it. K- yeah, kick out the two joysticks a little bit or round off the bottom and make it so it's smooth on either side because the player two is just 
dealing with this awkward, bumpy nonsense. And it's yeah. just, ugh. Anyway, so let oh, us know boy. what you think about this arcade stick down in the comments below. It or does have live. it does have onboard Wi-Fi though, so you can upload your scores to the worldwide high score leaderboard. Leaderboards oh, get and hacked we're not all even, the time. I'm not too concerned. And we're not about even that. talking about the fact that um the emulation for the arcade ROMs is provided by uh, Fightboard Alpha, which is a shareware service that we're pretty sure they did not pay any licensing fees I for heard or actually this. get the proper authorization to put the emulation in this stick that they are using has not been signed off on most of the developers because the software specifically is built in such a way that each developer who worked on it because it's a certain kind of shareware where each developer who contributed to it owns their part of the code as far as everyone can tell only one person who was even associated with the project said okay to capcom and no one else knew so there's also the fact that this whole fucking box could just be illegal to actually that release. that is i i don't know the details of it but i did see that headline making its way around a couple hours ago that the the are the the emulation software might have a problem software or hardware uh software okay that's what i thought yeah there could it's be a the problem actual, with this. it's actual code that runs the roms because this is not capcom building their own service to, to run the ROMs. Much like Sony outsourced the shit to make their crap money grab retro release co console. I was going to say, you got you to you gotta be a little bit more so, specific here because I heard shit, crap. <laughs> I'm like, I, I need to I need to have a name. You finally get it. The, the, the PlayStation Classic. PlayStation Classic. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I need they, they did the same kind of thing, but at least they bothered to get all of their ducks in order before they released it. As far as a lot of people can tell, this is just kind of coming and it, it, is using specifically an emulation software that by design cannot be licensed for commercial use. And it is being used for a commercial property that is selling for $200. All right. It's going to be interesting to see if that goes to a lawsuit or not. Either way, the Capcom arcade stick won't be coming out for a little while yet. So in the meantime, David, between now and then, what the hell can I play? Oh, I'm going to be bored waiting for this Let thing me... to come out and not spend money on it. <laughs> Let me try and calm down from that. There actually is a couple things coming out this week. That did uh, get that you I'm... a little bit more heated than I thought it would. I think it's because I... you were talking with our mutual friend who we're thinking of right now, and he got you heated in his stead. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I, I saw this thing, and the first thing I did was start talking talking to him. I'm like, dude, what do you think of this 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 Crapcom stick? And he's like, oh, man, let me rage about it. I'm like, perfect. I will re reuse part of that for my show <laughs> later. <laughs> Uh, all okay. Let's talk about some new releases. How about a PS4 release that also works for PSVR? You want to play some Jupiter and Mars? I played this. So, it's not bad. This is an undersea adventure set in a future Earth where sea levels have risen and uh, coastal cities are basically submerged and the oceans are starting to reclaim themselves. You play as, I think, you play as either two dolphins or one dolphin and then there's like a second character called Jupiter and Mars. And your goal is to basically explore the oceans, help other sea life. The game is very pretty, very stylish, and is all about exploration in an undersea adventure. Yeah, I, have... I got a chance to fit around this at the indie mix at GDC. It's not a bad little game. I don't know if it's for me, but I'm, I, I definitely like the way it looks. All right. How about Zombotron for PC and Mac? This is a 2D indie adventure game that has that kind of side-scrolling metal slug vibe from the trailers. You fight to survive on a mysterious alien planet, outwit its vicious inhabitants, and do whatever it takes to find a way off that wretched rock. Uh, this game actually does look pretty cool, though. Yeah, it's on my list of games to pick up eventually. Something that I'm probably more excited for than I have any reason to be coming out this week, Mortal Kombat 11 hits PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. It looks vastly different on Switch, if you've seen any of the actual re release trails for that. Um, it's the next NetherRealm game. Neverim Software. These are the guys that, you know, make Mortal Kombat. They also made the Injustice games. And, I don't know, it just looks fun in the dumb kind of way that Realm fighting games are. Uh, they're, they're always less serious, and this has just over-the-top brutality. It's a little ridiculous, and some of the fatalities I've seen for this game actually do bother me. <laughs> I, no still joke. I still think the favorite one I've seen so far is Johnny Cage's. When he, when he calls cut and brings in the stunt double... Johnny Cage's is pretty great, but if you've seen like the the noob Cybot one, or or even worse, the uh, oh, not, I keep wanting to say Dahaka. I can't remember that. that I one think Dahaka's the same. 
No, there's this there's a girl in it who's like part bug and her fatality is more or less like laying an egg in a person's face and then a bug bursts out of their skull and it's just <laughs> it's rough, man. <laughs> but hey, Mortal Kombat 11 coming out this week. So Get your fighting game, man. One there's thing no I want to bring games. about Mortal Kombat is how often do you see a franchise actually come back for the dumps like Mortal Kombat did? Dude, Mortal Kombat 9 was revolutionary. Mortal Kombat hit weird places when it went into, like, what, Apocalypse and Dark Arisen and whatever the hell, hell else was going on with the Mortal Kombat games. And then here's this random throwback game where they've made a new fighting game engine, which is also really good, put this amazing storyline in it because that is the main reason I'm excited for this the, game. The, when, they re when they rebooted and made the reboot actually part of a storyline, I kind of went, I'm into this. Yeah. They said, fuck and all this. It happened. We're not going to forget it. We're just going to kind of start over anyways, though. And so far, the games that they've been releasing have had some of the best storylines for fighting games for years and years and years and years. Yeah, I, I am. Most, most fighting games just don't get one. Mortal Kombat, for a while, there was a fucking joke. And yeah. they have pulled this franchise back up from the depths. And now it's like a fighting game worth talking about again. And that, that I am so... Happy to see that. I like it when long-standing franchises that were once tent poles are able to get that new life again. It's good. It's a good thing. Uh, I'm also going to jump ahead to Dark Devotion, which is a PC release. This is an indie adventure RPG uh, where you're exploring a fallen temple and you're testing the faith of your Templar in a uh, kind of dark, gritty... I don't know. This. It looked this a just... little bit like Dead Cells to me from the art style. Just, just a yeah. touch. I, I guess you could go that way. It's, it's hard to. I don't know. It's, it's another side st styled like indie, two D game. <laughs> just another. It's just real dark. It looks great. It's probably super fun. I'll probably completely ignore it and then realize that it's on sale in six months from now. Buy it and be like, oh my god, everyone should play this game because that's what happens with all of these games when I forget to talk about them. Same here. Uh, speaking of games I completely forgot about, and I swear I'm finally getting into it this time. This game came out in 2012, and everyone that I know have played it has just sung its praises from the rooftops constantly, time and time again, telling me over and over and over, hey, you love Monster Hunter, you should play this fucking game. Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen hit Switch this week. This game came out a while ago, and it's... Oh, man, I'm going to hate myself for saying this. Uh... <laughs> it's got it's got a little bit of a souls game in it got a lot of it. a monster hunter in it <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a feeling you were gonna go that route i know i had to no but it's a it's like a fantasy rpg style game but it's an action rpg that has a kind of intricate combat system where you can fight monsters and it has like weighted attacks so think like the dark souls or monster hunter style combat but you can you know lop off a chimera's head and all that other cr cool shit because it's definitely like dark fantasy and i've heard nothing but good things about it so maybe I, I, it's only, it's only I seven years admit, old but perfect for switch i will admit i know nothing about this game just yeah. nothing i like i said i ignored this game for a long time and everyone i know that's played it says just play this damn game play this damn game and maybe i should play this damn game maybe you should maybe i should let's talk about it uh, how about we talk about instead Days Gone finally hitting for PS4. This is the uh, Sony Ben game for PlayStation 4. Obviously, this is exclusive. Long awaited, depending on who you're talking to, single player action adventure survival zombie game. Yes, that is all from their tagline. <laughs> um, Sony Ben, if you don't remember, is the studio that put together Siphon Filter. Uh, they made Resistance Retribution and they made the Uncharted Vita games. So, not the main line of any of those games, but all the ports. This will be their. Versions. Well, they're not ports. Uh, Uncharted Golden Abyss and Uncharted they're, Fight for Fortune they're, they're, were original games. games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I meant portable. Right. Uh, this will be Sony Ben's first game since 2012. Yep. That's how long it, it's been since this it, team's developed anything. It looks cool. It's looked cool for a long I'm time. I'm into it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know where everybody is as far as like zombie fatigue. I feel like people are looking a little better now than they were a few years ago because that definitely was a problem for a while. And zombies kind of always come back, as the name implies. I mean, that, that's has, their stick. Yeah, that's their whole that's their whole fucking thing. 
<laughs> uh, but you're you're a biker in the apocalypse, which seems pretty interesting because you know you got to put gas in your hog, and that's see, I, I uh, that's gas always a thing. I, I like so <laughs> mock it, sure, but it I like that premise because you want to talk yeah. about a bunch of people who would fucking survive the zombie apocalypse. That would Bikers. be a fucking motorcycle club. <laughs> yep. Uh, I also just like the fact that you get a jump around a little open world style game on a motorcycle because you know you always end up with a horse or some other nonsense yeah i'm into this idea it's got a dynamic weather system you can complete objectives by using stealth or longer short range weapons <laughs> you fight other humans which is the big thing because i saw all kinds of like intricate traps that you could set up for people or, like, i like that it's kind of a area. three-way fight it's you versus them versus the zombies and you can funnel the zombies toward them yeah so much like in the Far Cry games, you can, you know, get a tiger in the enemy base and then close the door and let it do its thing. Yeah. Or a zombie Here bear, you, as it may be. You can kick open a gate and let the freakers take care of all the bad guys. Um, it also can have a lot of enemies on screen. I don't know the total number, but I don't think it's World War Z numbers. But it does look to be a pretty strong army of darkness running your way. As an aside note, that World War Z game, not that bad. Have you actually played it? Yes. I've legitimately been looking at it. Uh, I felt like I should wait for a sale, though, because I'm just getting strong, like, Left 4 Dead vibes, and I really want to play that game with a bunch of people, but I've heard some issues with it and that there's not a lot to do and that you get kind of bored really quick. So I don't know. It's it's a lot like Left 4 Dead in that respect. Yep. I think there's a lot. Don't get me wrong. Left 4 Dead was cool. Left 4 Dead was good, but there's a lot of rose-colored glasses when it comes to that game because it was because of its association with Valve. That game did get very boring very quickly because there was not much content at all to it. Well, the whole point of playing Left 4 Dead, for me, because I played a shit ton of Left 4 Dead too, was just playing it with people. Yeah. Get a bunch of friends, get on comms, and just play for hours and hours and hours. And, and that's, that's what you do fun. with this game. Because that's what I did with Vermintide. Yep, same with Vermintide. Just, to, just, uh, just to me, World War Z is, I don't want to say as good as Left 4 Dead, but it is a good substitute but when I mean that, I mean it as good as a game would have been back when Left 4 Dead first came out, back in, what, 2008? A while ago. Uh, and that's not bad, and I think it's 40 bucks. It's a budget title, as budget as you can get in, in gaming today. Mm. It's not bad. It is definitely better than I thought it was going to be. And there's some oh. good stuff there. But anyways, that's, back to Days that's, Gone. That's that's a review, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> back to Days Gone. I am actually look, actively looking forward to this. I'm excited for Days Gone. I'm looking forward to getting a hold of it, and I might even be streaming it when it comes out. We'll see. Sounds fun. Well, if you're worried that you could get bored of Days Gone or worried that you can get bored of World War Z or any of the other games on this list, I have one last game for you that I guarantee if you get into it will eat the next 1,000 hours of your life because, yes... We do have a new grand strategy game from Paradox, and it is that Paradox. Uh, <laughs> Imperator Rome hits PC this week, set in the uh, early centuries of Alexander's successor empires in the east to the foundation of the Roman Empire. This is the same crew that made Europa Universalis. These are the guys that made Crusader Kings. These are the guys that made Stellaris. These are the guys that make huge, eon-spanning, 4X-style history-based games that are super amazing outrageously overwhelming impossible to play unless you watch a youtube video first but if you get in there so damn fun i love grand strategy games like this i will likely be picking imperative rome up when i get a chance to actually play it and david here is not kidding when he says these games are immensely complex i have 160 hours in hearts of iron 4 which is another game this company does and I still only know how to play half the fucking game. The the C yeah, system. I have like 160 in Crusader Kings, and that game I just will constantly get screwed over when I play it. So they are extremely in depth. They are not for everyone because they are more or less just spreadsheet on spreadsheet of like numbers moving across the map. But, but there's God so damn, much, they're fun. There's so much cool stuff that can happen because there's intrigue and there's all this other nonsense. Like Crusader Kings, I think has one of my favorite stories because. You don't play as a single person. You play as like an empire. So when your character dies, you basically switch to being the next of kin. And I had a game where I was the king and I was beloved and I was starting to reun like unite most of Europe. I think I'd started in like Sweden or something like that and made my way down and just had this almost all of Europe was mine. 
And then there was rumors that my firstborn son was evil. And then my king died mysteriously. And so my player character turned into the son who then like decreed his alliance with the devil and turned evil. And then people started to throw a holy war against him. But then all the like witches and people that were weird showed up and joined my armies. And this, the game is weird as fuck and crazy shit happens. And I don't know how much you can play it to see all of it, but those games are really fun. Yeah. No idea know. if all that's going to make its way into Imperator Rome, Who but good knows? to know that this is the kind of shit paradox does. Yeah, they are. They just have random events happen that just ruin your whole day or yeah. make your day. And if you can get over the learning curve like a fucking brick wall, there's a lot of enjoyment they add here. And yes, Coco, I totally get if these games are just like too much for you to handle. I get it. These are not the these are niche titles, but goddamn, do I love them. I, I had a friend that wanted to get into it, and I was trying to teach him how to play. And he's like, you know what? Screw this. Can you just start a kingdom and then give me, like, a county, and I'll just be, like, a duke? And then I'll just kind of watch you play and just manage this one little county? And I was like, okay, yeah. So we played a multiplayer game for several hours, and he was literally just holding down, like, one tiny little corner of my empire. <laughs> Imperator Rome. Coming out this Imperator week. Imperator Rome. Looks yeah, good. You, I like Paradox Who thought we games. would end on Imperator Rome? But yeah, that's the kind of show you're watching. I, I love Paradox <laughs> games, man. What can I say? And with the end of new releases comes the end of the show. Womp womp. This Sorry. has been Game Points episode 171. Thank you all for watching. We do appreciate it if you can join us live here at Twitch TV slash Game Points every Monday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Introspect, Coco for Tacos, Nolan Richardson, thank you for dropping by. And to everyone else who happens to be lurking, your presence is definitely appreciated. But if you can't join us live like some of you can't, feel free to go to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash GamePointsPC, and subscribe there. Feel free to watch all of our old videos, the occasional review, etc. that happens to come out then. If you want to support the show in any way, you can do the likes, follow, subscribes, bits. If you're sitting on Amazon Prime or Twitch Prime account, you know what to do with it. But if you don't spend it here, give it to someone. It does go to waste if you don't do it. You can Make follow sure you the show. Jeff, Jeff Bezos's money. Yeah, take 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 Mr. Bezos's money. You can follow the show on Twitter at Game Points PC. You can follow myself, Stephen Brand, at Capitalist Pick Twenty One, and you can follow David Smith there at Palshife underscore Satori when he's not fighting for that name of someone else. Once again, this has been Game Points Episode One Seventy One. Thank you for all tuning in, and until next time, we're out of here. <laughs>